Today, we're going to learn something about mirrors and use of mirrors in book nooks and a little bit about optics. Um, I'm going to actually share my screen with you. And we're going to talk a little bit, first of all, about some science. Now, I know you guys aren't crazy about science, but <laughs> I like it, so you're stuck with it. Anyway, there's three things that you have to remember when you're using mirrors. One is that when you look straight into a mirror, it only reflects your own face back. We don't want this to happen. Number two is when the light hits the mirror, it reflects away at the same angle that the light hit the mirror. And thirdly, the image in the mirror will appear to be a far behind the mirror as the object that is reflecting in front. Okay, so just to show you some pictures. If you just look, if you put a piece of mirror at the back of, um, of a room box here, or a, a book nook, if you look straight into it with no barriers, it's all you're gonna see is your own face. And if there's anything that is going to ruin the illusion of a miniature, it's having a huge face at the back of the box looking back at you. So what we need to do is create a barrier. Okay, here's a barrier that I put in. Now, in this case, the mirror is gonna reflect whatever it sees on the back side of the barrier. Now, obviously looking from straight here, you've solved the problem of not reflecting your own face, but at the same time, you can't really see anything. So let's go over to the side of the box. When you look at the mirror, what you actually see is an angle, okay? And you see there's three different lines there just for experiment. Because I'm over here, it's not gonna reflect my face directly. If I was right in front of it, it would reflect my face. So if I just moved, it would start reflecting my face. But if you then put in a barrier like that, okay, what you're seeing now is whatever's at the back of the barrier. If you remember earlier, you couldn't see at the back of the barrier. The yellow area there shows what's hidden out of sight behind the barrier. There is no way from this position or any other position for that matter at the front of the book nook that you can see anything in that yellow area. Now, when you change the size of the barrier, you also change what's hidden. So a very little small barrier with a very little small mirror, and you'll notice the mirror and the barrier are the same size. This is to prevent you reflecting your own face if you stand in front of it you just get a little tiny area that's hidden. If you move the mirror bigger and you move the barrier bigger, then you get a very large area that's hidden. If you angle the barrier, you even have a bigger area that of stuff that can be hidden behind it. Now, this is only important if you want a three-dimensional kind of thing, because if you wanted just a picture, let me back up here, okay. Okay, you can just put a picture there. It doesn't matter that you've got a very small space. So you could decorate in here and all this is is a picture. Now this might be what you do if you wanted to reflect a scene outside, but we'll get to that in a minute. So angling the barrier allows you to hide more stuff behind it at the cost of the loss of space in the front of the box. And you can see again, as you move the, move the angle and move the barrier, and we're always measuring it against that line of sight from your eye at the corner of the box right over to this back corner here. And in fact, I find it very helpful to actually draw that line, draw both lines on the bottom of the box so you can see where your lines of sight are. See, here's another one. Now, this, you've got a huge hidden area that will be reflected in the mirror. At the same time, you've really got not much area for direct vision at the front. Now the third mirror, the third rule of optics that I'm gonna talk about is that the image in the mirror will appear to be as far behind the mirror as the object is reflecting in front. Now that sounds a little complicated, but what you want is using a mirror to give the effect of distance back here. Now, obviously that's just the back of your bookcase if you're talking about a book nook, but this is then reflected back there. And if you angle it, you get even further distance. So you can get some very far looking vistas way out the back of the box by just varying the placement of the barrier and the placement of the mirror. 
Now, do you have to place the mirror flat on the back of the box? No, you don't. But what, you, what it's going to do is affect what you can actually see. Now, let's suppose you've got a box shaped like this and you want to see what's in that area there. You'll find that if you put this at a 45 degree angle, all you see is yourself because it is now directly in front of your line of sight. So you've got to have it on a more, a more acute angle. And then from here, you can see right to the back of the box. Now you also see a bunch of other stuff, okay? So depending on where you look at the mirror, you know, you might see all kinds of things, but you will also see to the back of the box. And visually, it will look as if that blue arrow ends up over here where my cursor is. Okay, but you should be very careful when you angle that mirror at the back that it never reflects your face, no matter where you're viewing it from. So the final answer in terms of placement of a mirror, you have four variables, the size of the mirror, the angle or placement of the mirror, the size and shape of the barrier and the angle or placement of the barrier. So what you need to do is a lot of experimenting. Okay, now what I'm gonna try and do here is I'm gonna try and demonstrate some of those scientific principles by using an actual box. So I'm gonna use an eight inch box. because that's the easiest. Let me see if I can just angle my screen a bit here so that you can, okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so if you just put a mirror in there, you get some weird effects and it's just ref because this is a camera, you're getting to see behind. But trust me, if I look into this box, all I am seeing is my own face. Okay, now let's suppose that we now put in a barrier. So I have a barrier here. Now this is a barrier made of foam core, okay? Um, I really like using foam core for this kind of thing. And because I'm playing with a library kind of concept in this demo, I've got just pictures of shelves on the inside of that. Now, the nice thing about foam core is that it's actually difficult to cut all the way through it. I'm just going to take a little piece here and show you what I mean. Okay, assuming I can find my exact one. My ruler. Okay, so if you try and cut through this foam core, on your first cut, You won't go all the way through, but you now have an angle. So you can cut all kinds of different angles. So let's do another one here. Okay. Now, something to notice is that you can only go that way, okay? So it always breaks away from the from the, the box. So if you wanted, for example, to have another one here, now you're getting a quite a complex shape here. Can you see this? And it's all held together by the covering on the foam core. So you can do some pretty fancy things with a piece of piece of foam core. Um, and it makes a great thing to make things like barriers out of. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put this barrier up. Now I have, using this, I've stopped from seeing my own face. I cannot, no matter what angle I get to, I cannot see my own face through that barrier. And as I turn the box, the mirror is now showing me the inside of that barrier. So let's suppose that we want to have some something more than just a picture of shelves in there. So I've got a little resin guy here on a chair. I can put him behind the barrier. Let 
and now you can see him sitting there. Now you've got to be careful that no matter what your angle is, you see how looking from the corner, I cannot see him anywhere. But if I moved him forward a bit, I can still see him through my mirror. But if I start turning, you see, you can just see his knees starting to appear. I'm going to make that even more extreme. Okay, so we've got our barrier. We can't see our face. Turn it around. There's the guy sitting in the corner. Keep turning. And now you can really start to see him. So he's got to be moved back into the area here. Now this particular, this particular barrier, okay, is a square barrier, okay, which gives us a space to put some decorative effects. For example, since this is a library, okay, so it gives us some space out the front here to put things. There's another type of barrier that you can use. Another shape of barrier, I should say. And my mirror fell down. Okay, and that is an, just an angle. Okay. Again, I found a picture of library shelving on the internet. You can see that goes off into the distance. And I can put that in here. So what is that accomplished? Again, we can see off into the distance there. But we don't have as we we gained more space at the front of the box. See how I've got to keep angling this. Now there I could see my own face or my own fingers. So one of the things that we can do is use something else to cover that up, to narrow down the mirror. I'm not going to actually cut the mirror. You could also cut the mirror. But you see now I've given myself quite a bit more extra space at the front of the box at the cost of losing some space inside. Now I no longer have space for this guy with his big fat legs splayed out. So I would have to use something a bit smaller. And do I have anything a bit smaller around here? Hmm. Okay, this little gal, oops, a little fairy sitting on a chair. She's narrower and I can fit her into my library because she doesn't take up as much width as he does. Okay, there she is hiding at the back. You can see her. So the lesson to be learned here is that you can put a lot of things behind this barrier. Um, and depending on how much stuff you want to reflect, you gain and you lose space at the front of the box. So in most cases, we're going to be looking for a fairly narrow mirror like that. Again, you have to if you're looking straight at the box and you can see mirror like that, it means you can see your face. So you keep moving your back piece until you're happy with the placement. Now you can, I don't know if you can see, there is a line drawn on the core, on the floor there. That is to show the line of sight. And generally speaking, the length of this side of the barrier is about the same length as that line of sight. But again, experiment. You'll find all kinds of different things that you can show. Now, here's another little demonstration I want to do for you. This has all been done with a big piece of mirror, okay? And which reminds me, the big pieces of mirror that came in your kit um, cannot easily be cut with a pair of scissors without wrecking the mirror. However, they can be cut relatively easily with um, an X-Acto knife, score it with an X-Acto knife, and then snap it. Okay, so we're not going to use this. Let's suppose we're going to use a door. So we're going to have a door at the back of our box. But behind the door, 
is a mirror, a piece of mirror. So we're going to put that at the back of our box like that. And I just took a piece of foam car and put a picture of it, of a stairway. Now ignore that picture of the, <laughs> of the lake. Now, if you start turning the box, what you see is the hallway reaching off into the kitchen. And if I opened my door up a little bit more, the stairway going upstairs. Now look at the positioning of the barrier. It isn't angled this way like the other one. It's angled this way. And as long as looking from this corner, you can't see the backside, that's perfectly legitimate. So what you've got is a little space for, I don't know, a hall table or something. Just ignore that picture there. And you've got a mirror that reflects now we're going to have to play with that a bit because we don't want it to reflect the front of the box. But you see the point that I'm trying to make there, that you can get a lot of different effects by putting mirrors, say mirror, behind a door. Now, my last little demonstration here is with a window. So I'm just going to mirror tile, by the way, is sticky on the back. You can remove the, the backing. So I've just removed a little bit of it. So I can temporarily put this mirror, or pardon me, this window on the back of my box. I hate it when windows aren't square, so that's hoping that's going to be square. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, now this time we're going to have this picture here. I'm going to take that off, in fact, because it's very distracting. Okay, so now we've got this picture here. Oops, my mirror fell off, my window fell off. can see with angling your mirror in different directions and your wall, you've actually got a view. So you've got a view through your mirror. And the, the interesting thing is, is that as you change your position, you can see how the picture moves behind the mullions. So it really does look like you're looking out a window at a view. Okay, now the last thing I want to talk about here, I'm just going to set this on one side for a moment because I'll need it again in a minute, is I want to talk a little bit about electrical. Okay, having a, um, having a mirror that um, reflects, pardon me, having a book box that is going, our book box will eventually have a top on it. So think about it actually in your bookcase. It's going to be very dark in there. You probably are going to want some lights. So this is a little kit of electrical components. Now, what's in here? There's a piece of shrink tubing for holding wires together. There's a battery holder with an on off switch. And there is a little piece of wire to extend things. Um, this just plugs in. See at one end of this strap, there's a little fixture. So this just plugs into there if you need it to be longer. Okay, so it just plugs in like that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force it in, but but that's how that goes. Now this fits onto a nine volt battery. And I love it when they make things for idiots, right? You, there's no way to put this on the wrong direction because there's a big hole and there's a little hole, okay? So they go like, like that. Oh dear, and of course my hands aren't strong enough to snap it in place. 
Let's try that again. Ah, there we go. Okay. There is actually power now running through here. And here's your on off switch. Can you hear that? That turns the power on and off. Now, when you've got a room box, you don't want your book nook. You don't want your battery just kind of hanging there. This particular one does not have any holes in the sides, but your version has a little hole in one of the sides, and you can um, you can put this through the hole to bring a connection from the inside to the outside. Now you are eventually going to have a lid on this. Okay, you're so you could just rest your battery on top of the lid and have the this kind of taped up so you could get it the on off switch from the front. But that would be kind of ugly and you could see it from the front. So you want to hide the battery somehow. Now you could also hide it behind a piece of furniture. Let's see if I've got a sample here. There we go. Just hang on a second. Okay, this is a um, an angled corner cover, okay? And the back is empty. So I could easily put my battery in behind here and run the wires out. So running the wires out, the battery is in behind. Run the on off switch to the outside of the box so we can get at it and we could disguise the wires. Now, is that a good idea? Probably not because every time you have to change your battery, you're going to have to take that cabinet out. And when you take the cabinet out, if you beautifully decorated it with all your gorgeous real books that open, they are going to fall all over the place every time you take it out. So maybe what we should do is consider building a false wall out of a little bit of foam core, like that, okay? That means your battery's hidden. Of course, this would be cut off at this level. You can get at it from the top, let me turn it around. It easily pulls out in and out. Okay. And you can bring your wiring here you can run your other wiring along your walls or wherever you wanted to put it to your light fixtures. Okay, so that's probably a better idea. Now, when you got your kits, there was another wall. Okay, so there was another wall. This is a false wall that is exactly the height of the box. You can put that in place and put a little shelf on it and hide your battery behind that if you want to flat back and don't want any angled corners. So now your battery is hidden, it's in the slot there. Okay, if you choose not to use the false wall, it can be used for just a Now, another thing that you can do I'm just going to move this to one side for a moment. Do you remember this little piece of foam core that I was playing with to show you how it worked? Okay, I'm going to make two more cuts in it. Put that on the floor for a second. Okay. So now I've got a piece shaped like that. I don't know if you can see where I'm going with this. And this one I'm going to cut. Okay, so what do I have here? A little piece shaped like that. Now that here can be applied to the back wall. Oh, just I'm going to need a floor. So if you were going to make this, you would also make a little floor for it. But it means that this can be taped onto the back 
of your box with a floor in it, okay? And again, here's your a place to hold your battery. Now, this is a pretty effective way to do it. It means that you don't have to take your lid off when you want to change your battery. Um, now, another thing you can look at is the placement of your barriers. Now, this was one I used. This is the angled one. Okay, let's see if I can... Okay, so we've got our mirror reflecting our shelves. If you do not require all of this space back here, you can also build yourself a little shelf at the top of your, the top of your angle here. See that? You can hide your battery in the corner and use something to cover it up on the inside. You see, you can see it in the corner there. But if you had applied your picture of the shelves so that it cut that corner off, that gives you another place to hide your battery. So what kind of conclusions do we reach from all of this battery hiding? Don't put it to the bottom of the box because it will be very difficult to get at and change your battery. Don't put it inside a piece of furniture because it means anytime you want to change a battery, you're going to have to take your piece of furniture in. Behind the box, on top of the box, hidden in a, a little um, piece like this, which actually could be placed anywhere inside the box if you could hide it up high uh, with your battery inside it. So there's lots of different options. I can't be more specific than I have been today about placement of mirrors and placement of batteries because every one of you has a different idea as to what your book might look like. And in my Diagon Alley, for example, when I finally get around to building it, it is gonna have an angled building in the back corner. My battery is gonna go behind that angled building. In another one that I am doing, which is a fairy garden, my battery will probably be hidden up high inside a tree where I'll use the foliage from the tree to hide my little, battery container, my little battery sleeve. Okay, so I hope this was instructive and informative. Uh, it will be posted on our website, so anytime you need to look at it as you're planning it out, please go and do so. But the only thing I can leave you with is experiment. Play around. Angles make a huge amount of difference. Play with your mirrors, play with your angles, play with your structures until you've figured out exactly how you want it to look and what you want to see reflected in that mirror. So thanks guys, and I hope you enjoyed it.